What is happening to our children? This mother lost her 19-year-old. My other son, my sons, my sister, we're no longer the same. More teens getting shot than ever before. Three homicide victims in 2023 are between the ages of 13 and 17. We go one-on-one -on -one with Detroit's top cop looking for solutions. This is beyond a police department. So far this year in the city of Detroit, there have been three murder victims and five non-fatal shooting victims, all between the ages of 13 and 17, teen victims of gun violence. There are also teen offenders as well. One teen identified as a shooting suspect and three teens accused of carjacking. I spent time talking with law enforcement and victims' families, and they tell me while this issue may not affect you today, it very well could affect you tomorrow or affect someone you love. I think it's very senseless, it's very selfish, very stubborn uh, for someone to take someone's life. Earlene Griffin's daughter, Natasha Bulware, was shot and killed four months ago. She, she did mentorship programs and she was helping the other kids and she would help me feed the hungry people. Natasha was with a friend near Lodwick, near East Warren, in a car delivering food back on September 20th when a Chrysler 300 pulled up and started shooting. The 19-year-old was shot seven times. And I'm sure in the months past, you've been trying to make sense out of something that you can't make sense of. What, what, tell me a little bit about that struggle. Well, it's a moment-by-moment -moment struggle. She was only 19. Yes, but it needs to stop. Uh, but when I look at us, which is what I uh, lose sleep over every single day, uh, I am seeing some concerning numbers um, with uh, homicides or with juveniles. I sat down with Detroit Police Chief James White to take a closer look at the issue of teens and guns. As our offenders went from 37 offenders in 2021 to 51 offenders for a 38 percent increase. The year started with a deadly New Year's Eve shooting at a hotel party at the Hawthorne Suites in Detroit. A 15-year-old shot and another 15-year-old accused of opening fire. He is 15 years old as well, and so his life is over. He's going to be charged as an adult. While more teens are the offenders with guns, there are also more teen victims. But then you look at 2022. Uh, 2022 is a 50 percent uptick in victims of homicide uh, for juveniles, a 130 percent uptick in offenders of homicide for juveniles. Uh, so we went from 10 to 23. Wow. Uh, you, you look at our non-fatal shooting uh, victims, 25% uh, uptick. You look at our uh, non-fatal uh, shooting offenders, a 33% uptick. Edmund Butler was only 17 when he was found shot to death in his car last July in Southwest Detroit. Young, 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 young. His 17-year-old best friend, Zayer Brooks, admitted to detectives on video he was the one who shot and killed Edmund. This is beyond a police department. This is a culture that needs to change. It can't just be the police, right? I mean, it has to be and the police, and the, but those ands include others, other stakeholders. So many of our kids are making impulse, quick decisions that are driving them or, or driving them to bad things, and it's following them for the rest of their lives. The chief says more talk and attention must start going to the victims. We, we don't talk about victims. Uh, we talk more about perpetrators than we talk about victims. Victims like 19-year-old Natasha Bulware. What can we do to make it stop? Well, I think it starts in the home of the individuals out here with the guns. Um, show more love to your kids and so that they won't seek it other places and do the things that they do to get the attention that they want. And Erlene says there are others to remember, victims' families. The family is like broken from myself to my mother to my, her other grandmother, my other son, my sons, um, my sister, we're no longer the same. It's like a piece of a puzzle that didn't come in a box and you can never put the puzzle back together. So many victims' families out there. Our reporting on this continues tomorrow morning at 6.30 as we head to the Institute for Firearm Safety Protection at the University of Michigan. And we're going to sit down and talk to experts about access to guns and also how to better protect your family. It's really frightening when you do talk to parents who believe that their guns are stored safely. And then you talk to their children and they can explain exactly where the guns are hid or how they can use them. And when they were asked, they, were, they said, oh, I can get to that gun in 15 minutes. Wow. And parents felt like they had kept it safe. So That's we'll be scary. a little bit.
about that tomorrow morning. And I know the chief had a lot of insight on victims and their families. Was there anything else he said that really stuck out to you? You know, social media is a big topic, and obviously the chief is really frustrated, not only about the use of social media, but the lack of responsibility by these platforms who allow hate speech and bullying, which many times results in these shootings. He's hoping for a better responsibility and crackdown on that. And of course, our reporting will continue on the topic. We'll be looking forward to it. Thank you, Karen.